This king made history in his country when he gave his powers to his people. He instituted the National Assembly. He realized that people needed to be involved more in their own government. While many protests are happening in other countries, millions of people fighting for democracy, hating their government, in one country, it's the other way around. Before I tell you about the world's most and perhaps only fully loved king, here are some unique things about his country. Located between the two most populated nations, this can be the happiest country in the world for having basic education and healthcare free for all, one of the lowest crime rates in the world and almost no homeless people. It's also one of the fastest countries in the world to vaccinate its people against COVID-19. And the country the country where King is loved by its every citizen is called Bhutan. This is Jingmi Shini Wonchuk, the fourth king of Bhutan who changed the whole system of his country when he decided to give his power to his people. We are thriving. And the reason we are thriving is because we've been blessed with extraordinary kings. But the Bhutanese love him so much that they literally refuse democracy. His Majesty undertook many, many tours um, around the entire country, met with uh, every member, a representative of every member of the family in each um, district. And uh, people, they did not want democracy. And that is what made Bhutan into a unique democratic constitutional monarchy where people vote for their leaders but still have a king. Unfortunately, the world has so many politicians who abuse their power, leaders who always put themselves first. And that is why we need to celebrate and learn from Bhutan. I truly believe that for a very small country like Bhutan, with an even smaller population, it is extremely vital that we have a shared national objective. In fact, Bhutan's strategy is so unique that its top priority is gross national happiness. You heard it right. Not gross national product, but gross national happiness. Gross national happiness, therefore, becomes a responsibility of the government or a mandate of the state to create an environment where citizens can pursue happiness. They have an actual law that states if the government cannot provide happiness, there is no reason for the government to exist. How unique type of politics is that and how many countries could really use that? Back in the 1970s, a false king famously pronounced that for Bhutan, gross national happiness is more important than gross national product. Gross national happiness is being able to um, find the right balance between uh, economic well-being and uh, emotional well-being. And the legacy continues up to its fifth and present king, Jingmi Kesa Nange Wanchuk, a king who personally visited many areas in his country to spread awareness about COVID. That is why Bhutan was one of the fastest nations to vaccinate everyone. To top it all off, if a Bhutanese family loses a home, the king will give them a land where they can build a home and plant a garden for food. If a person gets sick or gets into an accident, they can decide to take either traditional or classical medicine for free. And after hearing all of this, there is no question why the government of Bhutan is very much respected and loved by its people. There's so much GNH going on in Bhutan that we are convinced that we are happy. And that is why we made this video because if Bhutan was able to achieve all these things, then every country can. We just need great and true leaders who put their nation before themselves. Today we celebrate Bhutan, but one day I hope we can celebrate every single country.